Carbon is the most essential element for all life forms on Earth. Many things like food, clothes, medicines, books, and all living structures are carbon based. Life on Earth is not possible without carbon. The amount of carbon present in the Earth's crust and in the atmosphere is very less. The Earth's crust has only 0.02% carbon in the form of minerals like carbonates, hydrogen carbonates, coal, and petroleum. And the atmosphere has 0.03% of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide gas. In spite of this small amount of carbon available in nature, carbon is very important for existence of life. The elements which have more tendency to achieve completely filled outermost shell are more reactive than the elements which have less tendency. For example, chlorine needs only one electron to complete its outermost shell, while sulfur needs two electrons to complete its outermost shell. In comparison with sulfur, chlorine has more tendency to attract electron and also more tendency to attain a completely filled outermost shell. That's why chlorine is more reactive than sulfur. Elements that have completely filled outermost shells are non-reactive and they are stable. For example, noble gases like helium and neon. Whereas, the elements that doesn't have completely filled outermost shell are reactive. And they wants to achieve completely filled outermost shell to become stable like their nearest noble gases. For example, hydrogen wants to achieve same electronic configuration as that of its nearest noble gas, helium. Let's understand how carbon achieves stable state. The atomic number of carbon is 6. It has 2 electrons in its K shell and 4 electrons in its L shell. Carbon has two options to achieve noble gas configuration. First option is to lose or gain four electrons. Second option is to share its valence shell electrons with other atoms of carbon or with atoms of other elements. Let's talk about first option in brief. If carbon is going to lose or gain valence shell electrons, then it could gain four electrons to become a C4 negative anion. But it would be difficult for the small nucleus with six protons to hold 10 electrons. Let's know about this in detail. Six protons in the nucleus hold six electrons due to the attraction between positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons. Positive charge on six protons balances negative charge on six electrons. But when four extra electrons are added, the balance between protons and electrons got disturbed. And it becomes very difficult for six protons to hold 10 electrons. Another reason for instability in carbon anion is interelectronic repulsion. Interelectronic repulsion is the repulsion between electrons which increases after gaining four electrons. Increase in interelectronic repulsion makes the carbon anion unstable and unable to hold 10 electrons. Because of these two reasons, carbon C4 negative anion is not possible. If carbon lose four electrons and forms a C4 positive cation, then it would require a lot amount of energy to remove four electrons. Because carbon has six positively charged protons and six negatively charged electrons, if carbon loses its valence shell electrons one by one, then the net effect of protons positive charge on the remaining electrons would increase and the remaining electrons 
will more strongly attract towards the nucleus. As a result, the remaining last two valence shell electrons will require a lot amount of energy to remove in comparison to the first two valence shell electrons. The last valence shell electron will require the most amount of energy to remove. However, if all four valence shell electrons will be removed, then carbon will become a C4 positive cation. This C4 positive cation with four positive charges will have a very high tendency to gain electron. But we have studied earlier that elements which have high tendency to gain electron are highly reactive. Hence, C4 positive cation will be highly reactive and very unstable in nature. For that reason, carbon C4 positive cation is not possible. Carbon overcomes this problem in the second option. Carbon shares its valence shell electrons with other atoms of carbon or with atoms of other elements. These shared electrons belong to the outermost shell of both atoms. In this way, both atoms achieve noble gas configuration and becomes stable. Let's move on to the next topic. The covalent bond. Bonds which are formed by equal sharing of electrons between two atoms are known as covalent bonds. If single pair of electrons or two electrons are shared between two atoms, it is called as single covalent bond. Single covalent bond is also represented by a line between the two atoms. For example, hydrogen H2 molecule has single covalent bond between its two hydrogen atoms. The atomic number of hydrogen is one. Hence hydrogen atom has one electron in its K shell and it requires one more electron to fill its K shell. So two hydrogen atoms share their electrons to form a molecule of hydrogen, H2. That's how both hydrogen atoms achieve the electronic configuration of their nearest noble gas, helium. If double pair of electrons or four electrons are shared between two atoms, then it is called as double covalent bond. It is also represented by a double line between the two atoms. For example, oxygen O2 molecule has double covalent bond between its two oxygen atoms. The atomic number of oxygen is eight. Hence, oxygen has two electrons in its K shell and six electrons in its L shell. And it requires two more electrons to fill its L shell. So, each atom of oxygen shares two electrons with another atom of oxygen to form oxygen molecule O2. Two electrons contributed by each oxygen atom give rise to two shared pair of electrons which forms a double covalent bond between the two oxygen atoms. If three pair of electrons, or six electrons, is shared between two atoms, then it is called as triple covalent bond. It is represented by three lines between two atoms. For example, nitrogen molecule N2 has triple covalent bond between its two nitrogen atoms. Atomic number of nitrogen is 7. It has 2 electrons in its K shell and 5 electrons in its L shell. It requires 3 more electrons to fill its L shell. So each atom of nitrogen shares 3 electrons with another atom of nitrogen to form nitrogen molecule N2. Each nitrogen atom in a molecule of nitrogen contributes 3 electrons giving rise to three shared pairs of electrons, which forms a triple covalent bond between the two nitrogen atoms. Let us now take a look at methane. Methane is a compound of carbon, which is widely used as a fuel. In methane, carbon is bonded to four hydrogen atoms by four single covalent bonds. 
The chemical formula of methane is CH4. We know that valency of carbon is 4 and valency of hydrogen is 1. So carbon shares its four valence electrons with four atoms of hydrogen to achieve noble gas configuration.